So today we're going to go over four different cross training methods that you can use to help improve your Jiu Jitsu. The first method that we're going to look at in terms of being able to assist your Jiu Jitsu through different types of training is good old fashioned cardio. Now, long, slow duration type training, whether that's swimming, jogging, walking, bike work, doesn't matter what it is, if we can do it for an extended period of time, it's going to help us develop our recoverability. They may not necessarily improve your ability to scramble or to shoot repeated takedowns or to punch hard or sweep strongly or something like that, but what it will do is between matches, so if you're competing, if you can recover between matches in a competition, you'll be in a better position, obviously. For training, if you can recover between your roles, um, and even within the role, you might find that you have one little burst where there's a big scramble, somebody almost sweeps you, you scramble, you stay on top, and that might go for you know, 10, 20 seconds, and that can be quite demanding. But having a good steady state aerobic conditioning base will then allow you to recover quicker and then you can push the pace again. Okay, so steady state is really, really important for that recoverability. And it's also really important for recovering between sessions. So if you do a really hard session on Monday night, if you don't recover properly, you probably won't be poised to do a really good session on Tuesday night. Okay, so having that good aerobic base will actually speed up that recovery but also doing the steady state training, that will actually help you recover as well. All right, so steady state training in between your jujitsu or your skills training sessions, that's gonna be our first tip for helping your on the mat performance. Tip number two, this one is movement prep. Being able to move your body efficiently and effectively is really going to help you when you're on the mats. You know, we get twisted, we get manipulated, we get put into positions that can potentially be dangerous, um, but also if we're not efficient and if we don't have the range of movement and the control of that range of movement, then it means that we have to use compensatory patterns to potentially get out of some of those instances, and that's where we burn up more energy or our risk of injury can potentially go up. So movement prep is a really important one as well. That could just be doing solo drills. So things like solo drills, your hip escapes, your bridges, your rolls, all those sorts of things that we typically do at the start of training, they can be really good to help you get the specific mobility, flexibility, control that you require to do the actual skills of Jiu Jitsu. Okay, so don't neglect your movement prep training. Uh, I know a lot of people don't want to do it after a certain period of time, but just flowing and just moving around, shadow, sort of like shadow sparring, uh, can really help you out in that regard. Tip number three. All right, this one is resistance training, and this is quite a touchy subject when it comes to jujitsu. There seems to be this school of thought that uh, you shouldn't be strong and you can't use strength and athleticism. It's this kind of dark art that no one is meant to use. Yet when we talk about somebody being super flexible, that's always really impressive and, and we love that. But then if somebody's strong, we hate that. Okay. Now, you can't go wrong with strong. All right? And I'm not saying that you should neglect the technical side of jiu-jitsu in uh, pursuit of strength. But at the same time, you shouldn't just totally disregard strength training. If we have two athletes with the same technical ability here, one of those having greater flexibility, strength, fitness, you know, all those sorts of capabilities, that person has the edge. Okay, so don't neglect the strength training. It will actually help improve upon your technique when used appropriately. And again, that's not to say that you should neglect the skills part of your training, your technique, and just muscle everything. We always want to rely on as least amount of strength as we can, but there's going to be times when we need it, particularly if we're fighting in open weight tournaments. Obviously there, being stronger is going to be an asset. Okay, the other thing that helps with having strength behind you is it can be protective for injuries. Okay, if you have more muscle mass, more bulk around joints, it makes it a little bit safer. You can tend to um, uh, fight against strain and stress is a little bit easier and you have that capacity to actually ward off injury a little bit better than someone who doesn't have that stability. So um, definitely look at strength training, 
but do it in the right way and then apply your strength in the right way when it comes to your actual jujitsu training. Tip number four. All right, think about adding some additional cross-training types of um, modalities into your jujitsu. Using things like boxing, wrestling, judo, Muay Thai, all these other types of martial arts that often a lot of people who do jujitsu have started off with. Now, the good thing with practicing those other arts is you can draw upon them, and I'm sure that a lot of people out there have trained with someone who's maybe got a wrestling background and they're from the jujitsu background, and you've got this person who you can't sweep, it's very hard to control, you can't hold them down, pin them, they're very good at moving their body and controlling because of their wrestling background. What happens if we're in a self-defense type position and the person who that we're in this conflict with has a boxing background? Can you actually get in on that person without getting knocked out? So all of these things will actually aid your jiu-jitsu uh, and helping you to develop that overall skill set. All right, so to recap, four tips on improving your jiu-jitsu with cross-training. Number one, establish a strong aerobic base. It will help you with recovery both between sessions and between bouts within a session. Tip number two, start to look at movement prep. Do your solo drills, work on your mobility, things like this to help you reduce your risk of injury and be more efficient in the way that you move your body. Tip number three, start to add in some strength training. It will be protective of your joints and your connective tissue. It will help you to be able to use strength when you need to use it if you're facing someone who has an equal level of technical ability. Tip number four, start to look at cross-training other types of martial arts, whether that's other grappling-based arts such as wrestling or judo, or striking arts such as Muay Thai or boxing potentially. These will help you with things like footwork, things like distance control and distance management. It will help you with offensive and defensive takedowns and it will help you with top control and pressure as well.